Well, the exhibition this weekend has, has been excellent. Um, we were greeted by the Pico people who were very, very helpful, it's helping us set up tables, giving us everything we want. One always makes new friends, people come up. I remember that as a boy, I had that as a boy. And indeed, this weekend, I met a couple from Canada who um, are over on holiday and uh, sought out the exhibition. I think people collect today toys and, and, and model railways because they're trying to uh, sort of reproduce their childhood. Most of us had some kind of model railway or other and the fascination with it I think extended after we went through uh, growing up and then the middle phases of your life and then you get to the end phase of your life you want to play trains again and I think that's what keeps us all together frankly. Like many boys born during or soon after the Second World War, I grew up with Hornby double O trains. So for me, uh, in adulthood, it is natural to operate a Hornby double O layout. Hornby double O trains were first made in 1938, just before the Second World War. What fascinates me about collecting Hornby double O is the fact that as a boy I had an, a Hornby double O layout and um, I suppose it's a bit of nostalgia. Of course Hornby was the mass produced uh, model railways and I think most boys in their time had Hornby double O or Hornby O gauge tin plate. If you look at the, the Hornby Railway Collectors Association, it's a much larger association than the Bassett Lake Society. We have about 500 members, they've probably got several thousand. Well, the Bassett Lake Society was, was started in 1991 with a small group of people with the intention of not letting the name die. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, Bassett Lake would be remembered. Uh, we had a set of principles. We wanted to play trains, of course, which is what we've been doing here this weekend. But we wanted to build an archive. We wanted to get knowledge about the factory, knowledge about the, the company itself, and, and publish it. And we do a quarterly magazine, and there's articles in there about what Bassett Loke did, because they didn't only make model trains, they made boats, they made industrial architecture models, a lot of very large range of, of, of product. Well, Bassett Loke was a company that was formed in 1899 by W.J. Bassett Loke. He'd done an apprenticeship with his father, who were boiler makers, and he thought there was a hole in the market or a niche market for models. So what he actually started was a marketing company. He didn't manufacture very much himself other than boiler parts. And then in 1904, he produced a huge catalogue, mostly with German examples of trains from Marklin, Bing, Corette, and started from there. And then up until the First World War, until uh, 1914 and through the First World War, they were still importing those things. And then after the war, because of the anti-German feeling, then they had to start going to different places, so they then began to manufacture their own things. The name still stands, the brand is now owned by the Corgi Group, but really I think Bassett Loki died in 1953 and the business started to change because O-Gage, which is the larger gauge, was, was really going out of fashion. And Double O was coming in, and after he died in 53, the company struggled on until about 1965. Um, and then Bassett Loke, as we know, the shops in Hoburn, they've pretty much gone. In fact, in 65, it was bought by Beatties, and that's really the end of Bassett Loke as we know it. We came a long way, and frankly, we've had a thoroughly good weekend. This is what railway modelling is all about, friendship and camaraderie. I mean, the most rewarding thing is watching the children, um, trying to avoid touching these pretty things running around. And, and, and their faces light up. And some of the children, you just can't get them away from the layout, so they just love it. <laughs> <laughs>